is Namrata. I am studying in HS Manya ICSC of Arvind International Residential School Kunigal. Today I am going to talk about a topic in biology that is transporting plants. As we already know that plants prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. For this process plants require carbon dioxide and water. The leaves take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The water along with the minerals is absorbed by the roots from the soil. So, what is transport in plants? Transportation in plants is a process in which the substances absorbed or synthesized in one part of the plant or moved to the other part of the plant. Transportation of water and food in plants is carried out by a conducting system consisting of two main tissues, xylem and phloem. Together they are called as the vascular bundle. Xylem. This tissue forms a tubular passage to transport water and mineral salts from the roots to the aerial part of the plant. The xylem tissue consists of four types of cells, namely xylem tracheids, xylem vessels, xylem parenchyma, and xylem fibers. What are the functions of xylem? The main function of xylem is transportation of water and mineral salts from the roots to the aerial parts of the plants. Tracheids, vessels and xylem fibers provide mechanical strength and support to the plant. Phloem. It transports the food manufactured by the leaf to all parts of the plant. It is a part of the vascular bundle and it extends all along the length of the plant body in the roots, stem, branches and leaves etc. The phloem tissue consists of four types of cells namely sieve tubes, companion cells, Phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. So, what are the functions of phloem? It transports the food manufactured by the leaf to all parts of the plant. The phloem parenchyma helps in the storage of food and phloem fibers provide mechanical strength and support to the plant. Now, let's see what are the differences between xylem and phloem. Xylem conducts water and mineral salts from the roots to the aerial parts of the plant, whereas phloem translocates the food manufactured by the leaf to all parts of the plant. In xylem, conduction is unidirectional, whereas in phloem, conduction is bidirectional. In xylem, conducting cells are dead, whereas in phloem, conducting cells are living. In xylem, conduction does not require any expenditure of energy, whereas in phloem, conduction requires expenditure of energy. In xylem, the xylem is made up of xylem tracheids, xylem vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Whereas in phloem, the phloem is made up of sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. Water absorption by the roots. The root system of plants consists of a main root which gives out lateral roots. The lateral roots bear a large number of fine outgrowths which are called as the root hair. Now let's know the speciality of root hairs. The numerous root hairs provide a large surface area. More the surface area, greater is the absorption. The root hairs contain cell sap which is of the higher concentration than the surrounding soil water. The cell wall is freely permeable that is it allows the movement of all types of substances. Whereas the cell membrane is selectively permeable that is it allows the movement of some types of substances. There are three types of movements of molecules. They are diffusion, osmosis and active transport. Diffusion. The movement of the molecules, solid, liquid and gases from the higher concentration to lower concentration. Osmosis. The movement of the water molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration with the help of a semi-permeable membrane. Active transport. The movement of Molecules from lower concentration to higher concentration requires energy. See what is transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plants. The factors which affect the rate of transpiration are sunlight, temperature, wind and humidity. The importance of transpiration in plants are it provides cooling effect. Transpiration helps in maintaining the concentration of cell sap inside the plant body. The uses of water in plant are transportation, food production and cooling. Science of minerals. Minerals are essential for a plant to grow well and complete their life cycle properly. The nutrient elements are further divided into two broad categories. They are macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients. They are required in large quantities. Micronutrients. They are required in small quantities. 
Some examples of macronutrients are potassium, nitrogen and phosphorus. Some examples of micronutrients are zinc, iron and magnesium. I would like to thank all my teachers and our biology teacher Pasha sir for giving me an opportunity. Thank you for watching my video.